Of the three styles of banjo playing with three finger picking, scrug style, melodic style, and single string playing, it is generally agreed upon that melodic style is the hardest to improvise in. And when you think about it, it makes sense because scrug style is built up of blocks of music we call licks for the various keys. So for G, you might have... For C, you might have... D licks and so you just put those together like Legos to build your break even better to improvise on the spot during a jam so generally you can get away with that in scrug style in the single string style where we alternate thumb index thumb index and in some cases TIM even um, we're just playing the banjo more like it's a guitar a linear instrument where we're not based on patterns or rolls so our scales would sound more like this so now we don't have to think about licks necessarily but all we're thinking about is what is the next couple of notes I'm trying to go to and we see it and we go towards it and it can be on the same string it can be on a next door string we're more concerned with just keeping the flow of notes going and matching the chord progression than we are with any other technical issue. Now, enter the melodic style. The very premise of this style is the alternation of open strings and fretted notes in a similar tonal range to create scalar passages with less left hand movement, thereby faster tempos are optional. So, for example, in a really quick breakdown, single string scale would play a G key like this. Like a guitar person would. Melodic style would say, well, I'm going to play this first G open, but I don't want to play another note on the same string, so I'm going to go over here to the D string and get the A, and then open for the B, and then grab the C here. So we're bouncing back and forth between fretted and open notes, and that's what gives it that... fluid sound. So if you're going to improvise in that style, one way would be to have pre-chewed melodic licks and then string those together. But that wouldn't truly be scalar improvisation. So I have a couple tips I like to teach uh, of how to move you towards being able to improvise in the melodic style in a pure improv form, not using licks. The first of these is a concept I call grouping. Think of it as any big scale has a long range. And as opposed to trying to improvise on the whole range, what you want to do is group your playing into small areas of the scale and hang out in that neighborhood for a bit. So if I have a G scale, might be the first couple of notes. So I'm grouping the first two or three notes in that scale, then I'll climb higher. I was grouping around the fifth fret. How about we go higher? Right here. Let's hang out in this neighborhood. So what it does is it allows you to spend more time in certain areas of the fingerboard and it stretches out your scale like a bungee cord so you have a better chance of making it through your break. If you play this note playing scale, it's going to be over in nanoseconds. So the next thing besides grouping is to always be sure to add rests. So important to paint with silence. Claude Debussy, the French composer, was fond of saying, music is the silence between the notes. And this is very true when you're trying to improvise. So, random spots, punch in holes. Rest. 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 Putting in rests makes a comma and creates a phrase. Now we're not just running scales, we're actually creating musical phrases. Very important. Then we have scale patterns. 
If you take a scale and you fold it to be circular, we would go like this. Uh, two steps up, and then back to the beginning. Up again, back to the last note, and we'd have a pattern like this. Or back down. Another way to draw out the length of your scale, it's like adding in Hamburger Helper to your solo, so you're not going to run out of notes too quick. So instead of this, we have this. Okay, and of course you can group scale patterns as well. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Finally, but not in the least, we have a trick called sequencing, where you'll go a bunch of the way up the scale and then jump back half of the way, or something approximately half, and then go further up. It's like if you're walking down a staircase and going down five steps, back up three, down six steps, back up four. It doesn't have to be an exact number, but the idea is you're sequencing it to have different layers. So if I'm coming down from a G melodic scale, To sequence that it would sound something like this. Now the leaps that I was going back up were random. It was whatever I could grab with my fingers. It's the concept that counts. When I'm coming down the scale, I hit that G string and I thought, oh, I could start from here again. Jump back up, I grab that. Okay, so sequencing is a, is a way to make it once again where we're not just being linear. So when you're practicing your melodic scales, remember, after you learn the scales, there's a whole nother world of turning them into music, and that's what really matters.